So in this section, I'm going to talk to you about uh, situations in which interest is uh, compounded more than once in a single year, or when there is multiple compounding periods during a single year. Let me try and explain using an example. So in the past, you have seen uh, situations where I'd give you something like the annual interest rate of 6%, we'd say the banks are paying that, and we'd ask ourselves, you know, what is the future value of $100 after one year? And you'd say, well, that's, that's rather easy, future value uh, of $100 after one year, or how much $100 would be worth after one year, would simply be 100 into 1 plus 0 0.06 because you'd earn uh, interest rate of 6% on your $100, so this would be worth 106. And on a very simplistic sort of a timeline, this would look something like this, where you are essentially spending or essentially depositing 100 here, and then one year later, you'd have 106. All right, so all well and good, uh, except that one thing that we did not explicitly state at the time we were doing all these computations is that this analysis assumes implicitly that interest rate is being compounded annually, or there is what is referred to as annual compounding. Uh, what does that mean? It basically means this. When you go to your bank and put in $100 right here in the, and deposit this, the bank basically says, look, we're going to come back to your account one year later. We're going to see how much you have earned in interest around that time, which, uh, which in this case is 6%. Uh, and then as we move forward, uh, so past the first year, we're going to give you interest on this 106, right? So the next 6% you'll get, get on this 106. But we only return to your deposit after one year. We assess how much you've earned in interest at that time. We give you interest on that amount. And then we again come back to this one year later. So basically this exercise of bank coming back only happens once a year. So this is annual compounding. Uh, things can be different. So now let's uh, consider this situation. Let's suppose we're still interested uh, in finding out the future value of the same hundred dollars exactly after one year. The annual interest rate is still six percent. But what if the bank says that, look, uh, the interest is now going to be compounded semi-annually. Now, the moment bank is saying that, basically what they're saying is this, that when you are going to put your $100 uh, in the bank, the bank manager is going to come back to your account in the middle of the year, right, semi-annually, so twice a year. So in the middle of the year, uh, the bank manager is going to come in and say, look, how much have you earned an in interest around this time? Now, of course, if the annual interest rate is 6%, right, then for the first six months, what you've earned is basically 3%. And so right around here, uh, you'd have about 103. Semi-annual compounding mem means that the bank is now going to say, look, as we move into the next six months, we are going to give you 3% on this amount. Uh, in other words, interest is being compounded semi-annually in the sense that the bank comes in and assesses how much you've earned in interest um, twice a year and compounds interest based on that amount. You can clearly imagine that in this case, the amount that you will end up with uh, by the end of the year will be more uh, than 106 and the reason is simple, 106 is what you get when you get 3% on your 100 in the first six months, and again at 3% on your 100 in the, next, in the next six months. But here, for the second half of the year, you're not only going to get 3% on the original 100, you're also going to earn 3% on the $3 that you earned in the first six months. So this is what is meant by interest being compounded semi-annually. One uh, convenient way of representing this is by augmenting the timeline in the following way, where you basically say, look, uh, instead of thinking about my timeline in one year terms, I am going to think of them 
uh, in terms of six month time periods. So here, uh, one time period represents six months, six months. And the next time period represents six months. And uh, so basically, as you go from here to here, you're still going to the end of the year. But this is convenient because then you can say, look, uh, this is my time period. And this is the semi-annual interest rate that I'm earning in each time period, uh, which is 3%, which is half of the six. And the reason why this is nice is because if somebody says, look, if your time period, if you're going forward two time periods, if your interest rate in each time period is 3%, which is being compounded, uh, you know, what would be the future value? And you'd say, well, future value of something like the $100 would be 100 into 1 plus the interest rate, which the and the time period interest rate is 0.03 or 3%. And you're going two time periods forward into the future. So this would be raised to the power 2. Mind you, again, when you're going two time periods into the future, you're still going one year forward. So I'm going to loosely define this still as future value one year from now, but this is different. This is one year. This is two six month time periods. And so when you will do this math, you will find that this will be 100 uh, into one uh, plus. Notice that this 3% is actually 0 0.06 divided by two. And then you're raising this to the power two. And so this will solve out to 106.09, which as we suspected is more than the 106. I mean, not by much, but still it's, it's, uh, it's more. Can you have more frequent compounding? Absolutely. Uh, so let's consider a situation where you're again interested in uh, determining the future value of $100 after one year interest rate the annual interest rate is still 6%, but now let's suppose we say it is being compounded quarterly. In one quarter, uh, in one year, you have four quarters. So now it's more convenient to represent the timeline in terms of quarters, where you basically say, look, here, uh, here we are today. There are four quarters. We're, so again, by this time, we're going to the end of the year. In each quarter, we are earning an interest rate of 6% divided by 4, which is 1.5. And so again, in this case, you can say, look, the future value one year from now, again, this is one year, is just $100 earning a quarterly interest rate of 6% divided by 4, which is 1.5, and then earning it over four quarters. As you can imagine, this answer should be even higher than before because you're earning interest upon interest upon interest more frequently. And when you'll do this math, you'll see that this is this will come out to 106 point. Uh, 136. I think you get the idea. If I now gave you a similar situation in which interest is being compounded monthly, uh, then in this case, you'll have this sort of a timeline, which will extend out to 12 time periods where each where each maybe I'll just draw it out right so this is uh, this each 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 time period is going to represent one month uh, and uh, over here your monthly interest rate is just going to be six divided by 12 which is 0 0.5 percent and so again you'd proceed by saying look future value of a hundred dollars after one year still or 12 months is hundred into one plus 0 0.06 which is six percent divided by the 12 but then compounded 12 times this will be even higher than what you got over here because you're earning interest upon interest upon interest uh, even more frequently uh, you will find that this number solves out to 106.167 and so notice that there's a pattern here uh, the number of times that interest is getting compounded, I am dividing my annual interest rate by that number, but then raising it to the same number. So four here, four here, 12 here, 12 here. And so more generally then, here's the formula. If I am interested in determining the future value of some cash flow that I'm getting today, and I'm determining this future value one year from now, I simply 
do r divided by m and then raised to the power m in this formula where m is the number of times interest is getting compounded uh, m was equal to 2 when we had semi-annual compounding m was equal to uh, 4 when we had quarterly and m was equal to 12 when interest uh, was being compounded monthly or 12 times in a year now you might say well uh, if so let me go take you back a little bit if you go back to these calculations that we've done you might say well uh, you know what this this six percent annual interest rate that the bank is offering this is kind of misleading because if the interest was being compounded semi-annually then our hundred dollars became 106.09 so we ended up earning more right in fact you'd say that uh, this is a rate of return of 6.09%, right? $100 became 106.09, right? So we technically earn more. And the same logic goes over here, right? Uh, if we have $100 with quarterly compounding, it got to 106.136 one year from now, then effectively you've earned an interest rate of 6.136%. And similarly here, you've effectively earned 6.167%. My point is that uh, when the bank says, oh, we're offering an annual interest rate of 6%, you're like, well, no, technically or effectively, I'm earning more. And that is, and you'd be exactly right. And that is precisely the difference between what we refer to as uh, the annual percentage rate or APR versus what is referred to as the effective annual rate effective annual rate sometimes it's also referred to as the effective annual yield effective annual yield is basically calculated using exactly this formula uh, you take the annual interest rate which is the APR so R is what is the APR which in our example was six percent consistently and you basically account for how frequently interest is getting compounded and therefore determine the appropriate or effective annual rate so in our previous examples so let's let's take the simple example of semi-annual compounding when interest was being compounded semi-annually we saw that effectively our annual rate was 6.09 percent and this formula would have basically tell you the same thing you do 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 2 and then raise this to the power 2 and subtract 1 and when you'll do this you will find this solves out to 0 0.0609 or 6.09 percent and so that is why sometimes it helps to determine what is referred to as the, uh, is the effective annual rate essentially the effective annual rate accounts for how frequently the interest is getting compounded and tells you what it is that you are effectively earning after accounting for the compounding periods.